UK Overseas Territories Conservation, a non-governmental, not-for-profit charity, has been working with Montserrat National Trust, the Montserrat Government and other partners in Montserrat for over 25 years to support environmental conservation on Montserrat. Our Adopt a Home for Wildlife initiative allows individuals, organisations, community groups and businesses to maintain and protect a public or private space. It is one realistic opportunity of safeguarding and restoring pockets of threatened and rare native ecosystems. The mountain chicken is the second largest frog in the world and found only on Montserrat and Dominica. However, hunting, habitat destruction from the volcanic eruptions and, even more severely, the recent arrival of the fatal chytrid fungal infection have devastated these frogs. A captive breeding and potential reintroduction programme, led by Durrell Wildlife Conservation Trust and Zoological Society London, offers hope of bringing this species back from the brink of extinction. However, with no known effective way of treating frogs or eradicating the disease in the wild, finding further measures is vital. The Adopt a Home for Wildlife site on Tim Horton's tropical dry forest area is the location of an experiment based on new research, as Luke Jones from Durrell explains. OK, well, I know this, this chytrid fungus has been a yes. threat to many amphibians around the world. And are, are there signs of, of some uh, species being able to fight back against it? Yeah, so we're starting to see some species develop natural immune response or resistance to the fungus. So the mountain chicken actually in Dominica, there's been very little work um, towards facilitating their survival with the fungus. But what we've seen is naturally there, they um, drop below the detectability level and we start to see a resurgence of individuals that obviously have some level of resistance to the disease. So we're hoping that the initiatives we're taking here on Montserrat will provide that additional support that the Montserratian mountain chicken needs um, to survive in an environment with chytrid and it should just give them that time that they need to be able to adapt um, to the fungus. And I know that your institution, Durrell, yes. and several of the other zoos like as we were excited, London, Chester Zoo and others have been breeding the mountain chicken in captivity. So you've got the stock yeah, ready so to come back. The mountain Chicken Recovery Programme is actually a collaboration of mm. many zoos on an international level. Mm. So there's my organisation, Durrell Wildlife Conservation Trust, who are currently leading this part of the initiative. Um, but we're partnered with ZSL, Chester, Norden's Ark. And all of those are going to be contributing mountain chickens to the reintroduction program that we're doing later in the year. So they've actually been breeding very well in captivity. We've learned a lot of their about their physiology, their behaviours um, and their breeding habits. And yeah, so the information we've taken from the captive population, we're going to be able to implement out here in the wild setting. And actually this should be the first in situ um, initiative of its kind to control chytrid fungus in an environment where it's been introduced. So if it's successful here for the mountain chicken, it could be successful for amphibians across the tropics that are suffering from the same fungus. Well, that's very exciting. I mean, and, and it also shows the long-term approach one needs. I mean, I recall uh, back in the 90s at the time of the volcano, helping arrange uh, for involvement and permission to remove uh, mountain chicken frogs for that purpose but you know these aren't short term are they you need to no. keep at it for a while yeah. and actually um, Doral have an initiative set aside for a 30 year commitment to the mountain mm -hmm. chicken um, moving forwards so this project although this project's only designated um, a two year window initially um, we are looking to carry on well beyond that period for another 20 25 years until we see the success of the mountain chickens reintroduction back into the its native habitat and then you can be the old guy doing the filming instead <laughs> exactly, of me. Well, <laughs> Great, thanks. So this is our first heat heating initiative. Um, and the way this works is that the solar panel provides the energy required to power this pump here. Currently this is just a makeshift filter to make sure that the pump isn't blocked up. Um, and that the pump passes the pond water through this series of interconnected pipes and tubing and this gradually heats up as it's exposed to sunlight throughout the day because of the matte nature um, of the black rubber and then it filters the water back into the pond at a higher temperature so currently we're just trying to um, deduce how effective this one particular initiative is at heating the ponds um, and it, yesterday it actually managed to raise the temperature by several degrees it was 
Okay, so we're not only measuring the temperature of the water, we're also measuring the temperature of the substrate and surrounding area. So this one day slogger you can see here is measuring the temperature of um, the rock. So one of our initiatives is to provide um, solar heated basking sites for the mountain chickens. So um, when the mountain chicken is infected with the chytrid, it mainly affects the underside of the frog. And what we've seen in some frog species which are surviving chytrid in the wild is that they spend more time basking when they have a high infection rate. So we've provided these rocks um, in the surrounding area and we're measuring the temperature of the surface to see whereabouts it's peaking at. Um, so we can deduce how effective it will be in treating the, the fungus on the underside of the frog. We also have data loggers in the substrate so that we can um, try and see if our solar heating initiative is raising the substrate and the detritus in the surrounding area um, to above the temperature where we start to see mortality of chytrid. Um, with the idea being that this environment here should act as a safe haven from the disease and should cure individuals um, who have been infected with the disease as they pass through it and as they utilise the different resources we are providing in the way of basking sites and um, ponds for them to bathe in. Um, and it's so that we understand the scalable nature of the work that we're doing here. So when we do bring magicians out, how many of these um, mats will we need to heat the pond to the desired temperatures that we require? or whether we could use other initiatives um, like the one over at the neighbouring pond. So this is one of our more simplistic solar heating initiatives that we're currently um, trialling, where we've actually just taken sheets of corrugated iron and we've sprayed them with matte black paint. And the idea is that through conduction, we'll be able to heat this pond. Um, one, of the th one of the main aims of this project is trying to ensure the techniques that we're using are scalable and easily implemented so that if um, it does prove an effective method of managing chytrid in a wild setting that we can scale it up and implement it um, on a global scale and to do so will be easy and cheap and effective. So we're currently in the process of trialling how effective this method is. We're just literally just set it up now and we'll be collecting data over the coming days. So, so th this has loggers in the system as well, does it? Yes, yeah, so I've currently removed it because um, mm. I'm taking the data loggers away to assess mm. from last week's data but I'll be replacing these data loggers later today or early tomorrow morning to um, restart data collection. Um, but one thing that's worth mentioning about this initiative that um, we haven't discussed up until now is that we're looking to create an environment with both hot and cold areas. So the two sites that we've seen so far, these ponds that we're heating and the canopies that we've removed and the basking sites we've provided, these will provide the hot area of the environment. So this is where we're looking to treat chytrid but we want these amphibians to develop an immune response or a resistance to it. And in order to um, encourage that, we need to make sure that they were constantly um, also being exposed to the chytrid fungus. So we're going to have a colder area with colder ponds um, where they will, they will be reinfected with the chytrid and then they should move through to these areas and utilize these um, in like self-treatment. So this goes on initiatives that we've seen in the in captive environment where frogs with high chytrid loads spend more time bathing in waters and normally this actually acts to exacerbate their condition because chytrid um, propagates extremely well in cold water. So by heating the ponds, not only will we kill the chytrid in the water, but it, it, the water should also come into contact with the surface area of the frogs, raise their body temperatures and help them to fight the infection. Good, yeah. well let's hope all that works and the uh... The frogs and the kittredge follow the script. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. We hope the newly arrived frogs like their custom-made ponds. This project has benefited because the landowner was already part of the Adopt a Home for Wildlife programme. You can help us continue and expand the main Adopt a Home for Wildlife programme on Montserrat by donating at ukotcf.org.uk slash Montserrat project. Thank you.